Well, I thought I'd talk a little bit about machine learning and in particular how machine learning can help to select experiments and control devices through the amazing power of Bayesian probability theory. I think one of the most intuitive ways to view machine learning is as a means of connecting dots. So if you imagine that I've got these crosses, the core machine learning task is to find a way to interpolate and extrapolate between and away from those crosses. So there we go. This is the classic machine learning curve fitting problem. It's what underpins classification, um, regression obviously, as well as more or less everything else we do. And the most common approaches today stop there. So they give you this line of best fit, if you like, the best prediction. But Bayesian probability theory goes one step further and says, in addition to connecting the dots, I'm also going to give you an indication of how confident I am in those predictions between and away from the dots. So what I'm drawing now on top of those crosses, on top of my best predictions, are envelopes of uncertainty. So we like to call these plots sausage plots. So the further away or further between the dots you are, the more the probability varies. Is that, would that be fair? Exactly. So what we see here is that we're very confident in what this curve is, close to where we've got observations, close to the blue crosses. But away from those observations, our uncertainty grows because there are many possible functions that are compatible with the truth. So imagine that the real curve was in blue, something like this. The red is our best guess, given the three observations we've got, and the orange captures what else we think might be plausible. So within the orange envelope, you can imagine many possible functions that match the observations and are variously plausible. So these dots capture one function that's possible, given what we know. Here's another one. So these orange envelopes that I've drawn these estimates of uncertainty lie at the core of the Bayesian approach to machine learning. So I like to talk about Bayes as being the oldest approach to AI. It's got this deep history of 250 years of principled mathematics underpinning it. And over that period of time, it's gone through various ebbs and flows. At various points, it's been more or less written off, only to re-emerge into the mainstream again. Particularly in the 20th century, we saw Bayes diminish as a result of the rise of what's known as frequentism, an alternative approach to statistics. But when World War II came along, Bayes found use in identifying German submarines, in tackling the Enigma code. Really, there wasn't another tool that was available that could solve these really challenging problems. So Bayes re-emerged in the latter half of the 20th century, and today is on the periphery, but I think regaining prominence within machine learning as a result of its ability to tackle some of the core challenges that machine learning today is facing. When people talk about the problems with deep learning today, deep learning being one of the most prominent approaches to machine learning, they talk about notions of hallucinations, unreliability, a lack of robustness. And all those problems essentially come back to this notion of how confident can we really be given what we know. So the Bayesian says, well, we're not just going to give you a single response to your prompt. We're going to give you a distribution. We're going to tell you, this is what I think the answer is, but I could be wrong. And my confidence in what I've reported is only 80%, for instance. My own hope is that Bayes might give us a tool to address many of these challenges that face machine learning today, give us a way to introduce more robustness and reliability and ultimately honesty in the answers that we give. My own research focuses on how we can use Bayes not just to produce predictions, but to actually take actions, make decisions, to affect control of things like real experiments on quantum devices. The problem that I solve in Bayesian optimization is where to select the next best observation. So imagine if I reproduce the plot from above, the Bayesian optimization problem is we're interested in finding the lowest possible point on this function, it's minimum. Where should I evaluate next? And so the challenge here is twofold. The, the first challenge is that, of course, we want to find low function values. So looking at this plot, I might say, well, I've got this fairly low function value 
down here. Maybe I should dig a little bit either to its left or its right and see if I can find a function value that's a little bit lower. That's the task of exploitation, saying let's double down on the low function values that we've already located and see if we can do just a little bit better. But balanced against that goal of exploitation is the competing goal of exploration. And exploration motivates us to explore maybe somewhere out here or somewhere out here. We've got really large amounts of uncertainty where it's perhaps not very likely that we'll find very low function value, a very good function value, but there is some chance. And every now and again, we're going to have to voyage into the unknown, put an observation down in one of these highly uncertain regions just to check whether or not there might be something there to gamble effectively. So Bayesian optimization is an approach to balancing those twin objectives, balancing exploitation, going where we're pretty sure we'll get a good result, against exploration where we're truly gambling. And it does that balancing using the principled mathematics of Bayesian decision theory. So within Bayesian optimization, we define exactly what our goal is, and in optimization, that's usually fairly clear. It could be, for instance, we want to achieve the lowest possible function value. And then that goal defines what's known as an acquisition function, saying how good or bad any other observation is. So if I look at this plot above, my acquisition function down the bottom is going to be pretty high, just to the left of that evaluation, pretty high just to its right, and then it'll decay away down to zero at this observation. But then we'll go up again somewhere out here as the uncertainty grows larger, zero and then growing again. So this green curve here tells me how valuable the Bayesian optimization algorithm thinks any other evaluation would be. And if I pick its maximum, that will tell me where I should evaluate next. So here the maximum is just to the right. I take another evaluation off to the right. Maybe it's just a little bit lower if we get lucky, in which case we update our model, update the model's uncertainty. Again, the uncertainty being zero where we've got observations, but growing larger elsewhere. And then update the acquisition function describing where we should go next. And so now with these two observations here, I've got the sense that maybe there is a mode in this region. It looks like the function is continuing to go down. Probably I want to probe a little bit further to the right to see what um, might be out there. So I'll probably have a peak in the acquisition function out there. If I take another observation, the hope would be that that resolves a mode, something like this, a little basin, where subsequently there's very little value in continuing to explore. The uncertainty between these observations will be very small. The uncertainty elsewhere will still be very large. And so after that process of exploiting around this mode, my acquisition function now will be prioritizing exploring out in these tails where there's still a lot of uncertainty. So my acquisition function might look like this. And so the next evaluation might, for instance, be somewhere like here, leading me to track down the remaining uncertainty in the far regions of this objective function. Well, so what? What is Bayesian optimization actually useful for? Actually, Bayesian optimization has found use cases across the entirety of science and engineering. So wherever you have something that you're trying to minimize or maximize to squeeze the most juice out of, Bayesian optimization makes sense as a way to do that juicing while using as few samples as possible. So where these samples are very expensive, where they entail a very costly experiment, for instance, it makes sense to bring the computational machinery of Bayesian optimization to bear to make sure that you're getting as much juice out of each sequential expensive experiment as you can. We've been using Bayesian optimization to help control quantum devices, to help tune these very fiddly high technology devices. We've been using Bayesian optimization to help place sensors, as well as to control batteries to make sure that we're getting the best possible use out of um, these really important bits of tech. Bayesian optimization has become a sort of service provider to the rest of machine learning and giving a tool to deliver what's known as auto ML or automated machine learning to make decisions 
about these big systems that historically were made by hand. So more broadly, Bayesian optimization is often useful in that role of automation, of taking over a design or decision process that was once done by human beings. Anywhere that you're having to pick um, a design, one of the most interesting use cases was in choosing a recipe for cookies. <laughs> you can use Bayesian optimization to choose experiments along the way to choosing a final design that you'll then actually put into production and to realize all your value from. So for each symbol in our organism, we replace it with what the rules tell us to. So in this case, we just get an AB. And we can repeat this. The A gives us another AB. And then this B here gives us an A. I can repeat this again. This A gives us an AB. This B gives us an A. And